You're listening to the Fed and Fearless podcast. On today's episode, we're talking about the two things that every nutrition business needs for financial success. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Fed and Fearless podcast. I'm your host, Laura Schoenfeld, a registered dietitian, nutrition business coach, and online entrepreneur with over 10 years of experience in online business. And I'm here to show you everything I've learned about creating a life and a business that nourishes you. On this podcast, we'll talk about the lifestyle habits, practical strategies, mindset shifts, and leaps of faith required to build a healthy body, a powerful mind, a strong spirit, and a successful business. Hello, and welcome back to the Fed and Fearless podcast. I'm Laura Schoenfeld, your host as always, and today's episode is going to be one about entrepreneurship. Now, hopefully you guys have realized by now over the last few months that the nature of our show has shifted more to talking about entrepreneurship and supporting health for people who are goal-oriented. So we're going to be talking a lot about business stuff over the next year. It's something that I'm always so passionate about. It's something that I've been passionate about for a long time. But now that my business is actually fully focused on helping nutrition entrepreneurs grow their business, we're going to be talking way more about entrepreneurship than we ever have in the past. So I hope that you're enjoying it. And if you have no interest in learning about how to grow a business or how to be a more effective entrepreneur, then this may not be the show for you. But if you are somebody who is an entrepreneur and especially a nutrition entrepreneur, I hope that you'll learn a lot about keeping yourself healthy and also keeping your business healthy as well. So like I said, today's episode is going to be a business focus episode. And what I want to talk to you today about is something that I think I tend to take for granted. And I know a lot of my clients might now take for granted because it's something that we focus so heavily on in the work that we do with our clients. But it's something that I realize that a lot of nutrition entrepreneurs are totally clueless about. I spend not a ton of time in free Facebook groups or on social media. I try to be mindful of how much time I'm spending on those apps because obviously I have a life that I want to live. And I know if you're like me, you don't want to be spending your whole life on social media. But when I do pop in there, a lot of times I'm seeing questions and challenges shared in some of the Facebook groups that I'm in that are designed to help nutrition entrepreneurs. And I see a lot of questions that come up that to me indicate a lack of understanding about the two things we're going to be talking about today. And that's why I wanted to bring it up on this show, because if you are somebody who wants to grow a successful nutrition business, these are going to be things that you absolutely need to understand. Now, most struggling nutrition entrepreneurs tend to make the mistake of trying to solve too many problems for their potential clients, resulting in unclear messaging, slow audience growth, and a more difficult time making sales on discovery calls, especially as they try to increase their prices. I wonder if that sounds like you. Do you feel like you struggle to talk to your audience or know what to post if you're doing stuff on social media or blogging or podcasting, whatever you're doing to get in front of your audience? Do you feel like when you get on a discovery call with a potential client, you're like, not very confident, it's going to end up in a yes as far as a sale is concerned. And if you are getting yeses on your discovery calls, do you feel like anytime you try to increase your prices, all of a sudden you start getting a bunch of no's? If that's you, then you definitely want to pay attention to this episode because what we're going to talk about today is 100% going to affect you. Now, on the other hand, the most successful nutrition entrepreneurs all focus on one main problem in their business, which results in faster audience growth and an easier time selling their services, whether that be one-on-one or group programs and courses. So like I said, let's talk about the two things that you need to have in your business in order to go from a struggling nutrition entrepreneur to a successful one. Now, what I want to start with here when we talk about the difference between struggling and successful nutrition entrepreneurs is big picture business concepts. Something that I really pride myself on and my team prides ourselves on when it comes to serving our nutrition entrepreneur clients is making sure that we're looking at business as a business person and not just as a nutritionist. 
And the reason I say that is because what you'll learn as we talk through this concept today, a lot of how struggling nutrition entrepreneurs approach their business is based on habits that they developed becoming a nutritionist. And I'm going to explain to you exactly how that works and exactly why you would be struggling in this area if you are a trained nutritionist. Just to let you know, first of all, it's not your fault. It's not your doing that this was something that was taught to you. And it's not your fault that you didn't necessarily see the problems caused by this way of operating when you were a student or when you first started your business. And it's also something that it's going to be up to you to make a change because ultimately nobody can come in and do this for you in your business. This is something that you have to do for yourself. And like I said, I like to look at business as there's some basic principles that all businesses need to be successful. And it doesn't matter if you're a nutrition professional, you're going to run into the same things and it's really important to be aware of them. So let's talk about some general business truths that 100% apply to a nutrition business. The first business truth that I want you guys to be aware of is that all successful businesses solve their customers' problems effectively. Even if you think about businesses that maybe don't seem to solve a problem, like let's say, you know, a luxury purse brand. Like, you know, if you go to the Fendi store and you want to buy a purse, and I assume Fendi sells purses. I don't really do a lot of uh, uh, high-end purse shopping, but let's say you walk into the Fendi store and you want to buy a purse. I know it might feel like that's not solving a problem for you, but really the problem is that you feel like either you need a purse or you want some kind of thing that you can own that would express a status level. Now, I know sometimes that might sound like a little bit of a weird reason to buy things, but let's be honest. If you're buying something that is a high-end luxury brand, typically you're not just buying it for utility. You're also buying it for the brand recognition. So any business you can think of solves a problem and it does it effectively. If it doesn't do it effectively, it's probably not going to be in business very long. And on the flip side, the more effective the solution is, the more successful that business will be. So let's think about a restaurant, for example. A restaurant solves the customer's problem of hunger. I mean, you might go to a restaurant because you just want to enjoy the food, and that might be a secondary benefit. But generally, if you're going to go to a restaurant to eat something, it's because you want to eat a meal, and meals solve the problem of hunger. Now, certain businesses will do it in different ways, right? Like if you think about a business like Chick-fil-A, I don't know how many of you go to Chick-fil-A. I I don't go a ton, but it is one of our go-tos when we're driving up to Ohio and there's not a lot of food options on the way up there. And I hadn't done a lot of Chick-fil-A growing up. I think honestly, I hadn't had Chick-fil-A until I was down here in North Carolina and it might've even been the last few years. I don't remember when my first Chick-fil-A experience was. But something I'm always very impressed by when it comes to Chick-fil-A is how effectively they get you through what tends to be very long lines to get food. And so Chick-fil-A as a business has worked really hard on making a more effective solution to serve their clients and customers good quality, you know, quote unquote, depends on what you consider good quality, but what they consider to be good quality, inexpensive, quickly accessed food which is a solution for people who are hungry. If you're like us, the reason we go is we're on the road and there's not a lot of options. And I prefer to do their grilled nuggets and their salad combo for my meal. So, you know, they try to account for different needs as far as like some people like my husband that just wants the fried chicken sandwich. And then people like me who are more health conscious and want to eat something a little bit better while understanding that when you're in the middle of Ohio, You're not going to have a ton of options and Chick-fil-A is probably going to be your best one. So that's an example of a company that's creating the most effective solution possible to create a very successful business. And from what I know about Chick-fil-A, it's one of the most successful fast food businesses out there. And they also don't even open on Sundays. So they're closed one day a week, which I'm pretty sure no other fast food restaurant does out there. And yet they're one of the highest grossing, most profitable restaurant type business that exists in our country. So they're a great example of a company that's put a lot of time and energy into creating a more effective solution for their customers' problems. 
Now, this might seem like kind of an unrelated example, but really just think about any company that you really like. If we want to move into something a little bit more high end, let's use Peloton as an example. I have a Peloton bike. I don't, I think I've mentioned this before, but I never saw myself owning a spin bike because I honestly used to hate spin classes. But the Peloton solves the problems that I used to have with not having access to a gym. During the pandemic, when it was first, um, everything was shut down, I literally didn't have access to workout equipment and we were able to get a Peloton. We actually borrowed one from our local gym that we were a member of. So we had access to that and that inspired me to order one. So as soon as we got the one delivered that we now owned, we gave the other one back to the gym that we were borrowing it from. So the Peloton bike solved the problem of not having access to workout equipment Now that workout equipment is available, it also solves the problem of wanting to be active without having to drive somewhere. So when I used to do more of my cardio type exercise, I would have to drive at least 10 minutes to go to a gym. And when I was doing Orange Theory for a hot minute, I was driving like 15 to 20 minutes to get there. So both ways that ends up adding 30 to 40 minutes to my already kind of long workout. And that was really unpleasant and undesirable for me to spend like two hours to set aside just to do a cardio workout. Whereas on the other hand, Peloton allows me to jump on a bike and spend 20 minutes working out. So if I can have something in my house that allows me to get a cardio workout in, it's an enjoyable thing. I was very surprised how much I enjoy the Peloton workouts and I can do it in less than 30 minutes. That to me is solving a really big problem that I have, which is the need to be able to do cardio and to be able to do it in a time efficient way. So Peloton's a great example of a business that created a solution to the problem of not wanting to travel to do workout classes and to still be able to have access to good instructors, fun classes, that kind of thing without having to leave your home. So you can think about any business that you buy from. They're all providing a solution to a problem that you have, whether that's you're hungry, whether that's you want to exercise, whether that's you need to fix your cooling system in your house, whether you need to get a new car, they're all providing solutions to a problem. And the ones that are the most effective and aligned with the problem that you want solved and the way you want it solved, those are the ones that you spend money with. So as a nutrition business owner, we need to be thinking about what kind of solutions are we providing for our customers and how effectively are we actually able to solve our customers' problems. Now, to add to that, your most effective businesses out there have designed an effective solution for a specific problem. And if you don't know what problem you're solving in a business, there's really no way that you can create an effective solution. So, how do you expect to have a successful nutrition business if you don't even know what problem you solve for your customers? And maybe you do know what problem you solve, but what if you don't know how to solve that problem or you don't know what's your typical way of solving that problem and you're not really creating any sort of effectiveness or efficiency with your problem solving for that problem? Hopefully that makes sense. I want to repeat it again. You need a specific problem that you're solving for your customers. Again, With Chick-fil-A, it's solving hunger. With Peloton, it's solving the desire to work out. With Honda, it's it's solving the problem of needing a vehicle to get around. And those companies have all done work to create an effective, attractive solution at various price points. Because, you know, Chick-fil-A is on the bottom end of the market. Peloton's on the top end of the market. It's not about the price. It's about how effective the solution is and how desirable the solution is. So do you actually have a problem that you solve for your business And do you have a core solution that you offer for your customers? Now, I find that most nutrition entrepreneurs don't have either, especially when they're first getting started. And that's why for so many, it's so difficult to create a successful nutrition business. Because if you don't know what problem you solve, there's really no way that you're going to create a solution for a problem that you haven't even defined. Now, that's why when I work with clients inside of my signature coaching program, the Nutrition Business Accelerator, we help every single one of them first identify the main problem that they want to help their clients solve. And then once they've identified that core problem, we help them figure out how to deliver the solution to that problem in a consistent and effective way. 
Now, these two things together, picking a main problem that you solve and creating a specific process for solving that problem, I have found over the years of working with nutrition entrepreneurs that those two things are the most important elements of a financially successful nutrition business. So as we go through why this tends to be such a challenge for so many nutrition entrepreneurs, I really want you to be thinking about your business and asking yourself, do I solve a core problem and do I have a process for solving that problem in a way that works for the vast majority of my customers? If you're missing either or both of those, then your business is not going to be as successful. So I want to talk a little bit about why nutritionists struggle with these two things. I mentioned in the beginning of this episode that we as nutritionists, unfortunately, in our education tend to be taught methodologies and ways of operating that actually go against those two things. So first, let's talk about why nutritionists struggle to pick a core problem to focus on in their business. If you are a registered dietitian, if you are a certified nutrition specialist, if you're a nutrition therapy practitioner, lots of different types of nutrition professionals out there, in most cases, you were taught to be a generalist. I remember in my program for becoming a dietitian, we learned about a ton of different health conditions and we were taught a bunch of different strategies, evidence-based strategies for helping address those particular conditions. And I'm not saying that that was a bad thing. Honestly, if you're going to become a nutritionist, I think it's actually really good to start out with a generalist education because first of all, how are you going to know what you want to focus on if you haven't been exposed to a lot of stuff, right? So if you've only ever learned about one health issue, how do you know that that's the one health issue that you want to focus on? You probably wouldn't, right? And so I actually think it's really valuable that nutrition programs are focused on more of a generalistic approach because it gives us as the students the opportunity to learn a lot about different things like different types of health conditions, different types of clients, different challenges and barriers with each of those particular health conditions, different approaches for solving those health conditions. You know, it just gives us a good baseline understanding of human health in general and the basics of nutrition that can help a wide variety of people. So it's really great during your education to be trained as a generalist. However, when it comes to your business, that's where it starts to become a problem. So if you're trying to help everybody with everything and you're just showing up and advertising yourself as a nutritionist, unless you're taking insurance and you're focusing on growing only a local presence and you happen to be one of the few nutritionists in town that's available, generally that is not going to be a very effective way to grow your business. So we have to really ditch that generalist mindset that we get taught as students in order to be focused on a particular problem and a particular solution to that problem. So just from the get-go as a nutritionist, we're trained to not pick a specific problem to focus on. Now, beyond that, I think there's a couple of different fears that actually get in the way of nutritionists picking a specific problem in their business to solve. One that I hear all the time from people that I talk to in my audience, as well as people that first join the NBA program and maybe are struggling a little bit with the niching element, they're worried they're going to leave people out. Now, there's a couple different reasons why this fear might come up. The first is, I think, a more selfless reason. Most people that go into nutrition really want to help people, right? We're not generally going into nutrition to make a ton of money, even though, you know, having worked with many clients that are earning multi six figures and even seven figures in their businesses, I know that nutrition has an amazing capacity for a great financial return. But the fact is most of us did not become nutritionists to make a ton of money, right? Like you wouldn't probably choose nutrition if that's your goal is just to make a lot of money. So most people that go into nutrition are very heart-centered, they're service-oriented, they want to help people, which is great, right? That's a great personality trait and it actually will help you grow your business if you're focused on helping people. However, it can have a dark side because what that ends up doing is causing you to be afraid to leave people out. So when you're thinking about wanting to help as many people as possible, a lot of times you're thinking more about helping the most wide variety of people as possible 
as opposed to going really deep on a particular health issue and helping as many people that have that health issue as possible. So you can see it's a little bit of a different way of thinking about it. You're still looking to help as many people as possible, but it's not at the expense of running a successful business. So if you're somebody who's afraid of leaving people out, again, just know that that's a really good sign that you care about people and it's something that you're gonna have to let go of if you wanna have a successful business. Now, the other fear that comes up that is related to this, but it's a little bit more of a self-focused fear, which I don't think there's anything wrong with being self-focused in your business, but you have to be aware of these things to be able to fix them, right? So the other problem is that we tend to worry that if we get too narrow in our focus on our business, that it's going to limit our pool of potential clients, which in our minds means that that's going to cause less sales. So I'd be curious, have you ever thought that? Have you ever worried that if you were to limit who you work with in your business, that you would make less money because there's less people out there to serve? I'm sure you're not the only one who's ever thought that way because I work with lots of people that have that exact fear. And I felt like that too. I mean, it's definitely something that I've dealt with in my own business growth journey. And it's a really common reason for people to avoid niching. So that is something that is really going to take some trust and some belief and some, you know, learning from people who have been there and have done it differently and have gotten the result that you're looking for. And so between myself and the hundreds of people we've worked with inside of the Nutrition Business Accelerator program, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that being more focused in your business will not limit your sales potential. If anything, it'll actually increase your sales potential because the people who are looking for what you have to offer are going to be way more attracted to you than somebody who finds you and just sees you as a generalist that isn't really focused on helping their particular issue. I've seen it happen time and time again. And if you've never experienced it for yourself, you're going to have to take that leap of faith to try it and see what happens. Because like I said, I have only ever seen it benefiting a person's business. And a lot of times you have to trust that that's going to happen in order to take the chance and take the action required in order to narrow your focus and pick a specific problem to focus on. So if you're worried you're going to leave people out or miss out on potential clients, just know that those fears are, they're valid. I totally get why you would feel that way, but it's actually something that's harming your business potential. And if you keep believing that, it's going to limit your ability to grow your business and possibly prevent you from ever having the financial success that you're capable of. Now, the last reason that I'm going to share, I'm sure there's lots of reasons why nutritionists would struggle to pick a problem, but the last reason I want to share with you is One that I totally get because I've been through it myself and it's been something that prevented me from picking a niche in the past. And sometimes I even question like, maybe I want to do something differently now because I'm a, you know, uh, dyed in the wool entrepreneur and I'm always looking for the next exciting thing. But this is the fear of getting bored. So I'm wondering if this is you because, you know, like I said, there's a lot of people that feel this way. I'm definitely one of those. And those of us who call ourselves entrepreneurs tend to have this problem because we like to start things. We like to create things. We don't necessarily like to stick with things and to refine things and to just do the same thing over and over. And so if you're like me, you might be afraid that if you pick a specific problem to focus on that you're going to get bored in your business. And I could probably do a whole podcast episode on the fear of being bored in your business. But what I will say from personal experience is two things. One, if you're getting bored in your business, you're probably not pushing yourself very hard when it comes to the kind of goals you're setting and the kind of growth you're aiming for. You don't have to be excited by creating new content, creating new programs, creating new offers over and over that kind of cycle is going to keep you stuck and it's going to prevent you from growing. What you can get excited by is taking something that's working and scaling it, making it better, making it more effective, growing it to a new audience, serving more people with it, and then even getting to a place where you're hiring team. And then your main focus as a team leader is nurturing your team and growing your team as opposed to spending all your time creating new content, new programs all the time. So 
that's one thing to consider is if that you've never gotten to a place in your business where all of a sudden things are working really well and the goal is just to maintain and grow, then you probably don't realize that there's a lot of challenges that come into play that are new challenges for you and that are things that you wouldn't have ever gotten to deal with if you were stuck in that cycle of constantly just trying to create new stuff for a wide variety of people all the time. So the likelihood that you're going to get bored is pretty low, in my opinion, because there's always new things that you can be aiming for in your business. And then if you do happen to get bored in your business, your business is not here to entertain you. This is something that I've heard over and over from a variety of mentors, and it's something that I have to remind myself all the time when I start to get bored or I start to get kind of like itchy feet wanting to create a new offer. This is not the thing that's supposed to create the joy and uh, you know pleasure in our life exclusively, right? So if you are feeling bored, rather than starting your business over from scratch and you know making it extra hard on yourself to get traction, look for a hobby. Look for something else that you can do in addition to your business that will create excitement and pleasure and intellectual stimulation for you. So that one can be a little tough love, but I have to keep reminding myself of it too because I'm in that boat where we're at a place in our business that we're really rinsing and repeating what we're serving our clients and customers with. And as someone who has that entrepreneurial mindset, I do tend to get a little bored if we're just doing the same stuff over and over. But the fact is that the more we do things over and over, the better we get at that at doing it, the better results our clients get, the easier it is for things to run smoothly, the more money we can make from it. So all of the benefits that we've experienced in our business have all come from focusing on one key problem and one key solution. So that brings me to the next piece of this is why nutritionists struggle to define their solution. So the obvious first issue is that they haven't picked a problem, right? So if you think about it just logically, if you're trying to develop a systematized process for solving a problem, you can't do it if you don't actually know what problem you're solving, right? It's just impossible. If you try to think about cre- like solving a problem that you don't know what the problem is, it's imagine it like a math problem. You wouldn't have any clue how to solve a math problem if the actual equation hasn't been given to you, right? So why do we think we're going to be able to create a solution for a health challenge if we're trying to be super vague with the particular health issue that people are struggling with. Now, I have definitely made this mistake before myself. This is one of the reasons I'm so passionate about it is because these two issues really were the things that kept me in a stuck place in my business. It wasn't that I wasn't making good money because I was, but I hit a ceiling and I couldn't scale my business. I was stuck primarily doing one-on-one because I didn't have a core problem and a core solution that I could sell in order to scale it past one-on-one. So when it comes to creating a solution and a process to solve a key problem, we have to have the problem first. So that's just a no-brainer. You have to pick the problem in order to define the solution. Now, let's say you have the problem picked. What else might get in the way of you defining your solution? Let's go back to our training. I told you that most of us as nutritionists were trained to be generalists. That's very true. Another thing that's very true, especially if you're in the functional and integrative medicine space, we're also trained to be highly individualistic. And what that means is we're trained to look at every single client that we work with as a unique individual, a unique snowflake, as you would say, and everybody's got a very specific collection of needs, collection of challenges, goals, desires, barriers, all the things that make them a unique human. And I'm not denying that. I 100% believe that every single person on this planet has a different situation and the solution to get to the result that they want is not going to be 100% the same. So I definitely understand why this is such a concern for most nutritionists. And like I said, in the functional medicine space, We are often trained to look at everyone as a very, very individual person. And there's nothing wrong with that, especially if you're doing one-on-one. It's very, very helpful to take that individualistic mindset and not just give everybody a cookie-cutter plan. However, when I talk about creating a process, 
I'm not saying that you can't address individual challenges. What I'm saying is that you want to create an overall strategy that tends to be effective for the vast majority of the people you work with. So just as an example, when I used to work with women with hypothalamic amenorrhea, I had four different main steps that needed to happen for the vast majority of my clients in order to get their period back. Just as an example, the first two, one was refeed. So getting enough calories and getting a good balance of macronutrients and micronutrients, vitamins and minerals, that had to happen. Every single person I worked with that had amenorrhea of any type, we had to do that first. And then rest, so not overtraining, sleeping enough, all the things associated with rest, that was another thing that almost every single client I worked with had to address. And so when I was creating a process in order to serve my clients with amenorrhea, we always looked at those two things. And so those two steps were something that was always included in my process and ended up being what was a huge component of my group program, which was called Get Your Period Back. So when you're thinking about working with clients with a particular health issue, there's going to be a lot of stuff that you do for everybody or even for 80% of your clients. And so I'm not saying that you can't address individual challenges and needs, but what I am saying is that if you want to have an effective, streamlined, efficient business, you have to understand what process you take your clients through in order for them to get the best results. Even if there's some changes or redirection or wiggle room there, depending on the person, you still want to have a core process because if you don't, you're going to be reinventing the wheel with every single person you work with. So if you're trained to be an individualist, again, there's pros to that and there's great reason for that. But if you're looking to have a successful nutrition business, especially one that's scalable, you have to start thinking about defining a process. Now, another challenge, and this tends to be more for new nutrition business owners, is that we tend to not come out of school with enough experience with one type of client to feel confident about a solution. Now, what I will say is when you come out of school and you start a business like I did, you're going to be probably a little unsure of what you're doing. So I don't care if you're working with every single type of person or picking a specific niche you're probably going to feel like you don't know enough when you first start. And that's okay. You don't have to feel like you know everything in order to help people. And you're always going to be learning. So it's not something that, you know, you have to get to this expert level status where you could teach a college course on it to tell people that you can help them with a particular problem. So I do find this tends to be a big barrier for a lot of my new nutritionists, um, the ones that are just out of school, the ones that haven't had a job maybe ever or for very long. I know we do like nine, I think it's 900 hours of interning in our dietetics program to get our RD degree, but a lot of people still feel like that's not enough to feel like they're an expert. So that can be a barrier to picking a particular, not only a particular problem to focus on, but to defining a solution. Now, what I will say about that is that your solution is not set in stone, right? So you can approach a particular health issue with the knowledge that you have about nutrition, about stress, about sleep, about exercise, all the things that you know, general beneficial type of things for. And then as your expertise grows, you can start to become more and more refined with your process. So that's, I'm hoping, something that helps you guys get out of your head a little bit when it comes to feeling like a newbie and feeling like you don't know enough about a particular issue to create a solution. Now, Maybe you're beyond the newbie stage. Maybe you've been in a nutrition business for years, or maybe you've been working at a job for a while and you want to switch over to private practice or start your own online business. A common reason why you might struggle with defining your solution is you probably haven't thought about how to systematize your methodology. I know that this was something that I didn't do for a long time. I think it took a few years before I really started systematizing my methods when it came to helping people. And Again, it's not something that we get taught as nutrition business owners. Usually in jobs, we're not necessarily getting a very clear process to work through. And if you're like me and you went straight into your own business out of grad school, then you may not have really had any sort of opportunity to consider what your methodology was and to actually do the work to systematize it. So either you're new and you don't feel like you've had enough experience with a particular type of client 
or you've been in business or been in the workforce for a while and you have never really thought about systematizing your methodology, that might feel like you're not ready to focus on a particular solution. But trust me when I say, and and I say this because we've worked with hundreds of people in our NBA program to help them do this, it is possible to do this work. Even if you think that you're not ready, even if you think that you don't know enough, even if you think that you don't have enough experience. And the reality is that creating a process for solving your client's main problem is going to help you help your clients far more effectively, which means they'll get better results, and you'll be far more efficient, which means you don't have to work as much in order to help your clients get the outcomes that they want. Creating a process also allows you to create scalable solutions that go beyond one-on-one services. It'll also allow you to hire additional dietitians or coaches that will help your clients implement the process you've created. And even if you just stick to a solopreneur one-on-one type of business, you'll be able to help people in less time. And so that means you don't have to be working as much and you can make more money. So if you want to have a more profitable business while also working less, consider whether or not you've picked a specific problem to solve And if you've created a process for solving that problem for your clients to get results in a repeatable way. If you haven't done either or both of those, that's going to be the key next step for you to take in order to grow your business successfully. So now that you know a little bit more about these two really important steps to growing your business, if you want to learn more about the most important steps to growing your nutrition business successfully, I would love for you to join us for our free live training series happening in the month of February, how to build a six-figure nutrition business that nourishes both you and your clients. Now, we first ran this training last year. I believe it was August of 2021, and we had such an amazing response to this that we are so excited to run it again for those of you who either didn't get to see it last time, or maybe you did participate last time and you just want a refresher. So we're going live in February, and I would love to see you there. In this free three-part training series, I'm going to be breaking down the exact steps that you must take in your nutrition business in order to fill your roster with high-paying, ideal clients. And you'll learn how to do that without burning yourself out or spending hours on social media. The steps I'm going to share with you are the exact steps that I've taken in my own nutrition business to bring in multiple six figures of revenue every year while still having a lifestyle of freedom. And to date, I've taught over 150 other nutrition entrepreneurs like you how to do it successfully as well. Now, let's be honest, if you're anything like me, you got a lot of stuff going on in your life and you really don't have time to keep DIYing your nutrition business. You have a big vision for your impact and your income, and you're here to achieve your dreams of owning a successful online nutrition business. In this free training, I'm going to hand you the roadmap. I'll show you how to build a nutrition business that creates the income and impact you desire without the overwhelm or wondering what the heck to focus on first. Here's what you're going to get in this three-part training series. You'll learn the three core elements of a successful nutrition business. And if you're missing just one of these three, it's actually going to kill your business growth. We'll also review the five biggest mistakes that nutrition entrepreneurs make when they're trying to grow an online business. And I'll show you what to do instead so you're not making this mistake and you're able to grow your business successfully. We're going to talk about social media, and I'll share with you why I don't teach my students to use Instagram to grow their business, which I know can sound a little crazy, but it is something that I know that a lot of nutritionists believe they have to use in order to be successful, and I'm here to tell you that that is not the case. I'm also going to show you my signature six-step strategy for building a nutrition business the right way so you can grow your income and your impact more quickly and easily than ever before. As part of your participation in this live training, you're going to get a free nutrition business audit checklist in order to check on your business's health and to make the necessary changes to optimize your business so that you can actually reach your financial goals and hit those six figures and beyond. To join us, go to lauraschoenfeld.com slash live, L-I-V-E, to register now and get all the details about how to attend the training. Our first live session starts on Thursday, February 3rd, so don't wait on getting registered. If you choose to attend live, 
you'll get the opportunity to ask me your questions about building a successful business, and you'll also get the opportunity to win some amazing prizes that are only available for live viewers. So go to lauraschoenfeld.com forward slash live to register now, and I can't wait to see you there. This is one of my favorite things to do every year to teach so many nutrition entrepreneurs how to grow a business successfully, and I know you're going to love what we cover and be able to apply it to your business today. So I'll see you there. Can't wait to have you on the training with me. And I hope that our conversation today about figuring out what problem you solve and coming up with a process to solve that problem for your clients, that that's going to be something that takes your business to the next level that you may not have even realized was possible for you. If you liked what we talked about today, feel free to connect with me on Instagram at Laura Schoenfeld RD. I would love to hear from you if you have a problem that you solve in your business, if you've come up with a signature process to help people solve that problem, and if not, what's getting in the way of you doing that. I love having these conversations with you in the DM, so feel free to communicate with me there, and I can't wait to connect with you over on Instagram. All right, that's it for me. I hope that this conversation was valuable for you. And I'll look forward to seeing you here next week on the Fed and Fearless podcast. Take care, everybody. Are you a dietitian or nutritionist business owner that wants to create an online business that consistently brings in dream clients who actually want to buy your services, but you're struggling to figure out the right business strategy to get there? then keep listening because I have a special opportunity that will help you create the highly profitable and impactful nutrition business that you always wanted. Inside my signature group coaching program, the Nutrition Business Accelerator, created exclusively for nutrition and dietitian entrepreneurs, you'll learn how to start, grow, and scale your online business to six figures and beyond so you can experience the financial and time freedom that you desire. I created this program to help struggling nutrition entrepreneurs get clarity on who they serve, how they serve them, and how they can stand out in a crowded market so that they can more easily attract dream high paying clients into their online nutrition business. This program is for brand new business owners and nutrition students, as well as those who have been in business for months or maybe even years, but aren't getting the traction that they'd like to see in their growth. Inside the NBA, you'll learn the most important foundational business building and marketing principles, not just the latest tools like social media, so that way you can experience sustainable business growth that adapts to the constantly changing world of online business. Over the course of 12 weeks, I'll show you how to attract high paying clients who are excited to work with you and willing to pay you the rates that you deserve. You'll get training on how to effectively sell your services in a way that feels authentic and converts prospects into paying clients without feeling pushy or salesy. And you'll get step-by-step instructions on how to create programs and services that provide truly transformative results, leading to glowing testimonials and referrals from your current clients so you can have the greater impact that you desire in the world around you. You'll also learn how to manage your time, your energy, and your resources so you can get more done in less time and experience the freedom that you really got into entrepreneurship for. When you apply what you learn in the NBA program, you'll never have to feel stuck or overwhelmed in your business again. Want to make this your reality? Then the Nutrition Business Accelerator is your pathway to achieve all of this and more. Get the proven strategy that has helped hundreds of business owners start, grow, and scale their nutrition businesses to five to $10,000 months and beyond, and accelerate your progress to build the nutrition business of your dreams. Go to laurashoenfeld.com forward slash NBA to learn more about the program and get your name on the wait list so that you can be the first to know when our doors are open for our next round. That's laurashoenfeld.com slash NBA, which is short for Nutrition Business Accelerator. If you have big dreams of running your own profitable and joy-filled nutrition business, you do not want to miss out on this one-of-a-kind business coaching opportunity. I can't wait to support you inside the NBA program.